So my name is Annalie Shum. Um, I'm the Associate Director of Engagements and Programs for um, AIA Seattle, and I get the opportunity to work with the Seattle Design Festival. The Seattle Design Festival is exciting because it's not just an event that we host every year, it's also an entire organization. So we are a nonprofit dedicated to unleashing the design thinker in everyone in our community. So we're really focused on hosting events that bring designers together, but also invite the broader community into the conversation about design. The Seattle Design Festival actually used to be called Design in Public. It was started by a core group of really passionate volunteers who saw an opportunity to bring the design community together for some interdisciplinary collaboration and to really empower the broader community to join them in the work. Um, so this was a strategic initiative um, uh, founded in part by AI Seattle and then also just a dedicated group of volunteers who were excited to bring more design and celebrate the design already here in our city. I think one of the things that's really important is we forget that everything around us is designed, our built environment, the technology we use, the clothing that we wear. And so having it out in the public is a really accessible way for people who might not usually engage with designers to either come out and join us or stumble across us during their time in the city. And the other thing is, Having it in a space like this helps design feel fun, which you're not gonna engage in something unless you're having a really good time. So we want it to be fun, we want it to be inspiring, and we really want it to be accessible. What we do is we gather a group of different leaders in our community. Um, we have two leadership groups, our board and our council, and we ask them, what do you think the community needs? And then we invite the community into that conversation as well. And what we found right now is people are looking for something fun, and they're really starting to ask themselves, what, what if, what next, how can I be a part of a change? And so this idea of finding your passion through curiosity came out really strong. This is really an opportunity to engage with designers, ask them, hey, why did you build that? What went wrong when you were building it? And just learn more about the design process because design is good design when everyone who uses the design is engaged. So the Seattle Design Festival, we are a container for our community. This is our community. Everything you see here is a response from designers, emerging professionals, and nonprofit organizations. So I think the reason it's so strong is this is truly a community-driven and implemented festival. So the installation presents the concept of universal design, and it uses an accessible bathroom as a specific talking point. So to feature certain, certain aspects of of what designers and architects may want to think about when designing spaces. So I'm part of the Northwest Universal Design Council and I also direct the Washington Assistive Technology Act program. We partnered with an architect firm, Denson Hughes, and then also with Age Friendly Seattle to put together this exhibit because we felt it was important to talk about the concepts of how universal design impacts spaces, both public spaces and private spaces, and how when you incorporate incorporate concepts of universal design, you make it usable for a wide uh, array of people with varying abilities and disabilities. So we we use um, some paneling that you can see behind me for the walls and we use sort of basic building structures uh, to sort of support accessories um, and they're, in this case they're the toilet or bathroom fixtures and then outlining sort of uh, dimensions of what a typical bathroom would be and then showing using wheelchair users as an example how much space they would need to turn around in the space because um, the minimum guideline right now is, is 60 inches and what that is and what that looks like giving people the ability to try that out just to see how difficult that actually is incorporating some assistive technology as well so that people can understand that you know when you build technology for people um, or I should say, when you build an accessible space, it allows people who use technology to actually access the space comfortably. One of the reasons we wanted to have this exhibit was for, so people would be curious about what universal design meant, and also curious about what options are out there, and being able to think creative, creatively about um, 
various kinds of technologies, various kinds of design concepts, and then thinking more broadly in terms of universal design, well, how people are designing public spaces in Seattle, utilizing public spaces. It's really easy to find inspiration in um, people with disabilities um, finding solutions to how they overcome various functional limitations in their lives. And we can learn a lot from those kind of solutions that people with disabilities find. And designers, I think, working with people with disabilities find a lot of really interesting solutions too. But everybody is touched by um, disability or aging into with functional limitations. And so it really reached a, a really broad range of people that we typically don't. It's a really great event. It's really interesting to see the other designs that are uh, presented. Um, a lot of really interesting concepts and um, and it's just nice to be part of it because I think it, it helps people think you know beyond not just the artistic or the functional but think about inclusivity and you know making sure that designs can be used for as many people as possible. Okay, so my name is Perry Roden. I'm an abstract mixed media artist and muralist and I was contacted by Architects Without Borders, um, Yidam Sek and Wanawari to paint the boards behind me. So it's three boards based on my interpretation and understanding of gentrification in the Central District, displacement and the history of the CD. Part of commit a part of creating these um, boards started with listening to the audio and the stories of Wanawari's story project. I also listened to three of Yudim Sek's songs about the Central District. So that was like the basis of my like inner inspiration I'd say and then from there I really tried to tap into my own experiences growing up not only in South Seattle but also being raised in the Central District with my family's involvement in the CD of going to Garfield High School. And so each board represents for me the CD, what displacement feels like, and then also what gentrification feels like as well. And I still wanted people to look at the art and not necessarily feel sadness, but to see the fullness of all of the different emotions, joy and movement and rhythm and, and love. I hope my artwork inspires people to pause and I'm allowing the art to just be and I'm more just like kind of listening incognito to see how they feel. I hope that people are able to get a sense of just how much Seattle means to certain people. So many people move here for jobs, just different opportunities. It feels kind of transplant in a sense. I hope that when people come here that they really get a sense of like this is home. And although it looks different, there's still people here who have that feeling of home and it's changed. But I hope that they can feel that sense that this is their home as well and also of recognizing that um, there was a lot that happened before they first got here. You know, I actually had never heard of Seattle Design Festival until um, I was invited onto this project. I'm here at my installation or our installation and then I'm trying to like peel away to like see other people's stuff. I love the theme of like curiosity. It's interesting seeing different interpretations of that. I definitely want to come back next year and I hope that I can see even more art in here again. Support black artists. Yeah. Hello everyone. My name is Kadambari Mathur. I'm from India and I'm a fashion designer. So a very dear friend of mine, he came to participate in the Ahmedabad Design Week and Ahmedabad is where I live. You know, they're sister concerns, Seattle Design Festival and Ahmedabad Design Week. So we are trying to, you know, bridge the gap between nationalities and nations and communities. You know, I don't call myself a generic designer. I'm very specifically a fashion designer, but this was a very good opportunity for me to think out of the box and write design proposals. The name of this installation is Play, Resist, Make, Stories That Connect. So the story which is being connected here is one that is from India and one that is from America. In India, the city is called Kutch. In America, the city is called Seattle. Uh, I'd like like to say that I would have liked to use actual chewing gum for it but it was obviously a health hazard to do anything with spitting post-covid so which is why we replicated it with play-doh 
My name is Myrna Crosley Elliott. Well, the inspiration of this installment came from Canterbury Cad from India. She connected through the Coast Salish weaving of which I am part of. I practice Coast Salish weaving. So when she connected with me, she put forward her idea that she wanted to bring to Seattle with this festival and asked if we would collaborate, which thought about it and it seemed like a wonderful idea. So we connected that way. It's going to be put together and, and made somewhat of a mural, a tapestry. So um, as far as the um, festival itself, this is the first time I've been to this festival and I'm just amazed by all the installations and the warmth and the, how everybody has welcomed us and supported, supported us throughout this day. I like the idea that um, it's called curiosity um, because everybody that has come up has been very curious and asking lots of questions all ages and they've all left with experiencing um, the cultures of India and the cultures of our First Nations people and of this wow, area that, just by sharing awesome. their own ideas on paper that. and just thinking about about what they're doing. I would just like to say thank you Haichka in the Coast Salish language. Uh, thank you for having us in this territory of the Duwamish people. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. your time.